Hello, good day, everybody. Uh, my name is Brett Damon, and once again, this is Our High Calling, a podcast for people looking to understand the high calling that God has for them in their lives. And I would like to explore the Word of God and how to apply practical princi- uh, Christian principles uh, to our everyday life. Uh, this is the last podcast for 2020, and I thought a lot about uh, different topics that I I would like to talk about, um, and I'm going to settle on something that I believe that we all need to uh, think about and really take a, a hard look at ourselves in the mirror and understand that being a Christian is more than just claiming to be a Christian or or trying to follow all the rules, there really has to be a conversion in our heart and in our mind. And that conversion has to reflect in the way we think, the way we talk, and things like that. So I would like to talk about conversion. And as we come upon a new year, obviously 2020 has been uh, struggle, hectic, um, difficult on many levels. I just found out last week that my father, uh, 76 years old, uh, had COVID and he was in the hospital for three days, but he's a fighter and uh, he was sent home with some oxygen and he's doing much better. But, you know, things like that, you know, when you hear about COVID and things like that, it, it makes us, you know, think about um, eternity, think about salvation. But for us who are already claiming to be Christians, we have to think about conversion. We have to think about, are we truly converted? And the Bible gives us some benchmarks to look at on whether or not uh, we have been converted. And, you know, God doesn't expect us just to play Christian. He wants us to be Christian. And, you know, I tell people all the time that being a Christian isn't what we do, it's who we are. And so I would like um, to, to talk about, you know, what is the meaning of conversion? What, what does it mean to be converted? You know, in, in the Bible, uh, Jesus, when talking to Nicodemus, talked about being born again, changing, right? And that is basically, in a nutshell, what conversion is. It's changing to something new. If we turn in our Bibles to 2 Corinthians, if we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So it's saying, therefore, if you... If any person um, is in Christ, right, anybody who has decided that they want to follow Christ, like I did in 2003 when I was living in South Korea, if I decided that, you know what, Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and that's the direction I'm going to go, then, you know, there are some stipulations. And here it is. It's you are a new creature, right? You are new. Old things are passed away. Now, what are those old things? Well, the old things is the old you, right? The things that make up who you were, right? Your thoughts, your ideas, not everything. I mean, when we become a Christian and we look at what it, what we need to do to be a Christian, some of us possess those things, right? If you are already kind and gentle, then you don't need to change that because that's what Christians are. They're kind and gentle. So that's good. In fact, I've met many people who have all the hallmarks of being a Christian without professing Jesus as Lord. You know, it would be very easy for them to give their life to the Lord because they really do possess a lot of the characteristics that Christ uh, desires of us if we are to truly be one of his. So it says here that we need to be old things are passed away. So here we have passed away and a term for death is pass away right he passed away he's dead so our old habits our old ways 
that don't live up to the standard of Christianity need to go away, need to be dead. Not on life support, support, not barely living. They need to be dead, snuffed out, gone, no life in them. And behold, when it says behold, it has, has to, it means look. You can behold it. You can see. So when we become changed, when you know, when I became changed, you know, I talk about you know in my conversion story about how I used to live uh, like a thirty-year-old frat boy. Well, you know, in college, how many people, um, many young men, uh, behave right. Um, consuming things, putting things in our bodies that we probably shouldn't. Anyway, those things had to go away. And I understood that. And the more I read the Bible, the more I read the spotless character of Jesus, and the more I desired to be like him, I understood that a lot of things that I was doing, I was thinking, I was watching, I was listening to, they had to go away because they didn't meet the same high standards that God had, because God is holy. You know, if I want to go to heaven, which I do, and I hope all of you do as well, it's a holy place, right? Holy angels are there. You know, the heavenly sanctuary. I mean, these are all holy things. And if we want to be there, then we need to resemble something close to that. And that is the standard that God is seeking in us and it's not it's not impossible but um there's overcoming to do right if you read in the book of revelation it talks about overcoming let's go let's find one how about chapter 21 uh verse 7 so if we go to revelation chapter 21 verse 7 it says he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So what is, what is this that we're overcoming? It's, it's our, our carnal nature, right? It's our old self. It's our worldly nature. It's, um, it's, it's the flesh, you know, the life that we're living. Um, we, we, need, we need to overcome and some some things are very difficult, you know, especially if you're physically addicted to something. It's very hard to overcome them, but it's not impossible because obviously we have the help of God and and we have, you know, the Holy Spirit to help us. You know, if you read the last, you know, chapter 21 and chapter 22 of Revelation, man, it just it talks about um, some, you know, I- incredible things and one of them if you go uh, to Revelation chapter 22 and verse 11, it's talking about probation ending, and it's talking about the second coming of Jesus. And it's talking about the condition of people uh, when Jesus comes back. And I'm just going to read it for you here. It says, uh, Revelation 22 verse 11, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Now, we're talking about, you know, when probation ends, you're locked into whatever position you find yourself in. You... You're either locked in to sheep or you're locked into goat, right? Locked into wheat, locked into tare. But the wording is very important here. Let's read this. He says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. So God is describing the people that are lost as unjust and filthy. And the people that are saved, righteous and holy. So those are the standards that we are trying to obtain, a righteous holiness. And does it seem impossible? Absolutely. It seems difficult uh, to do that because we know that in ourselves, there's, there's no good in us, right? We, we are born in this carnal nature. Our minds are filthy. The things we think about, you know, our tongue, everything, right? But God is saying that uh, it can be done. And with, with God's help, with the help of the Holy Spirit, it can be done. We can be righteous and holy because that is the benchmark. That is the standard that we're going to. So when, when we have a conversion experience, when we have a, a conversion from an old to a new, 
This new birth consists in having new motives, new tastes, and new tendencies. And um, this this new life, um, which which we uh, received uh, through the the help of the Holy Spirit, right? It, only the Holy Spirit indwelling in our hearts um, can can help us to overcome our our other nature, right? And um, so we now become partakers of a divine nature, and we have to think of ourselves that way because where we're going for eternity is a divine place. So it's it's not about just claiming Jesus, right? Name it and claim it, it's yours. No, you can do that with all certainty that God is going to lead you and direct you uh, if it's his will. But there's work to be done on our part. There, there's an incredible amount of work to be done. If you're going to tear down and rebuild, it takes effort and work on our part. Um, so that's what I'm talking about conversion, because a lot of people can, can go through initially, but unless you are fully converted, unless you're on board with, with the life of a Christian and what God uh, expects of us, then you're not truly converted. It, you're, you're the old man of sin hasn't truly died. If you don't look at yourself in the mirror every day and pray and ask God to show you what your defects are and to humbly uh, try and overcome them because pride will get in the way every time, right? And it's it's pride that brought down Satan. It's pride that brought down a third of the angels. And it's pride that's going to bring down a lot of people on this planet. So we need to humble ourselves. That's another thing about looking to Christ. Christ was very humble, right? Very meek. He he walked in and started washing the feet of his disciples, right? You're talking about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So he was very humble. We need to be that way, right? Um, conversion in the heart means that we want to be like Jesus. It's not just that we love him and we want to spend time with him. It's that we want to be with him because heaven is going to be full of Christ-like people. And it's something that we have to work on every day, right? But when men who claim to be Christians retain all their natural defects of character and disposition, um, how, how are they different from the world, right? They, they're not appreciating what God has called them out of. You know, that was part of my problem, you know, when I was in college and, and one of the colleges I went to was affiliated with the Lutheran church. And I would look at these uh, professed Lutheran Christians, and I'm not here to bash on Lutheran Christians because uh, the type of guys I met in college are found in every denomination, probably in every religion. But they were in name only. There wasn't anything about their life, looking back, that I would say, wow, you guys are, are different, right? They were doing the same things I was doing. They watched the same things I was watching. And they were listening to the same things I was doing. So why, why would I want to get up early on, on Sunday and, and go in there and listen to another lecture for two hours? Uh, when I can just stay home and watch football. Because obviously what you were gaining from that two hours on Sunday wasn't changing you. It wasn't making you any different from me. Maybe you get to say that you went to church and things like that, and maybe you got to put on a nice suit once a week, but you know what? I wasn't bothered by that. That, that was not a deal breaker for me. So you haven't been born again unless your nature is changing. And remember, getting baptized, being born again, going under the water and coming out, it's just a symbol. It doesn't really do anything. You can come off just a wet sinner if you don't decide to change your life. If you don't decide that I want to be like Jesus, there's work to be done. And Jesus says that it, it, it doesn't count in the courts of heaven to just claim it, right? And there is actually... Um, Jesus is talking. Let's let's go back to our Bible. Let's go back to the book of Luke. 
So if we go to Luke chapter 5, there's a story that Jesus talks about. Um, chapter 5, verse 37. And it says, And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith, The old is better. So here we have, if there's going to be a conversion, right? This new wine is obviously in the Bible speak, new doctrine, a new way of life. So if you're going to put this new way of life, you need to put it into a new body, right? A body now that's been um, dedicated to the Lord, right? A, lo- a body that's uh, now you understand that it's, uh, it's been paid uh, a price. Jesus died on the cross for you. Uh, so, you know, when you look at the life of Jesus, he, he wasn't smoking and drinking and partying and doing all this stuff. He, he would never because he, he understood. He created our bodies. He knows how complex they are. And he knows that he would only put good things into our bodies. Right. That, that's the reason why uh, he he has clean and unclean. That's the reason why in the Garden of Eden, he put forth a diet for them because he knows what's good for them. So Jesus knows what's good for us. We have to be new people, right? Everything about us is going to be different. And when we become a new person, a new creature, then the message that we get through the Bible on a daily basis is not going to burst us, right? If we're trying to be two people, if we're trying to hold on to our old nature and take in all this new doctrine, all this, all this new information, it, it won't work. But it will work if it says here in 38, but new wine must be put into new bottles and both are preserved. So if you're not changing your life, if you're not changing your thoughts, if you're not rearranging how you're living uh, based on Christian principles, then you're not truly converted. And in fact, what you're doing is you're putting that new wine into old bottles. And to, if you want to be successful, I know many people do, they want to be successful and, they, and, and you have to count the cost. You know, the cost was Jesus on the cross. What is, what is God asking you to do, right? He wants you to be happy. Obviously, heaven is going to make us happy, but he wants us to be happy here on earth, earth as well right? That's why we have the Ten Commandments, the hedge of protection around us. That's why we have uh, Jesus as our example. He wants us to be happy. That's why we have, he's preserved this Bible for so many years for us to read and to study and to be blessed by, right? Reading the Bible is a blessing. Learning new truth and new doctrine and applying it to our life, it's a blessing, you know, going deeper and deeper into the word. It's a blessing for us. And, and, the, and the deeper we get, you know, the more our love grows for God and the more people can see, you know, in our, in our life and the way we live that we truly are converted. We are changed. You know, we have no desire for the things that we did before. And, but you have to remember that Satan isn't letting you go ever. He'll never let you uh, just be happy being a Christian. He's going to continue to tempt you. He's going to continue... To, to throw at you the things that used to make you happy. But what we have to do is we have to love what God loves and hate what God hates. And if you do that, then Satan will have no power over you because Satan wants you to sin. Okay? That's his goal. Because the wages of sin is death. And that's the lot of Satan and a third of the angels and everybody else who refuses to... Um, give God the honor and the glory that he deserves. Um, It is their lot, and he wants you to sin. But if you draw near to God, if you desire the character of Jesus and desire to be with the Father and the angels and and desire that, then the, the temptation will have no draw to you, right? The desire to drink alcohol will be gone, to do drugs, to smoke, to look at pornography, to do all these things. You don't want to do that because you don't want to be separated from God. Because as you study and read 
it, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel happy to know God better and to know that he loves you and to know that there is a, a verse for everything that you need, right? The Bible is, is a book that is there to comfort you, to educate you. Um, it, it's God put down in words uh, through men. He inspired them to write down everything we need to get to heaven. This is our uh, basic instructions before leaving earth, right? That's what the Bible is. But we have to remember that only Christ's plan is, is a safe one, right? Doing it God's way is the only way. You know, um, what did I read the other day where it said that, you know, somebody was talking about how they were getting to heaven, and I, and I was thinking to myself, well, that's not biblical, and that's, that's not the heaven I'm going to, because uh, the heaven I'm going to, uh, the only path is, is through Jesus Christ, right? He, the only way to the Father is through the Son. So if, if you're going to a heaven that doesn't include giving your life over to Jesus, then we're not going to the same heaven. Because uh, my heaven includes Jesus on the throne. And um, my guess is whatever other heaven there are, it's, it's not real. <laughs> it's just it's made up because there's only one heaven and that's the one found in the Bible. Um, and, you know, it seems very arrogant to say that, but it's just true. The, you know, the, these other religions that were made up, um, if you look at them, and I don't want to get too deep into the hedges with this, but they're man-made. Ultimately, any religion that has uh, men getting the better end of the deal and women and children uh, being lowered to second-tier citizens, that, that's, not, that's not the religion of heaven. You know, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Right? It's the world. God loves men and women. Obviously, yeah, in, in the church... You know, there are, are different roles for men and for women, but that doesn't change the fact that God uh, wants uh, men and women uh, in heaven. And, uh, you know, the way that I go to heaven is the way that my wife goes to heaven. You know, it's all because of our character. You know, it's all because of our trust and obedience uh, to God. And it's, it's by day by day, right coming coming to god on our knees and praying and asking him to forgive us and help us to overcome and help us to do and be better and as we pray and and as we draw near to him you know our prayers get longer and deeper and they start to spread out and it starts to include our friends and our family it, it includes uh, the affairs of this world it, it just we just want his will to be done and it will eventually, right? The Lord's Prayer says, um, as in heaven, uh, it will be on earth, right? And that's just the way it's going to be. Um, but, he, but we have to become a new person in Christ. And, you know, a lot of times that doesn't mean you're going to look any different. You, you look exactly the same. But everything else about you is different. And maybe you can, you know, change. Um, you know, as we become, you know, Christians, it's less about us and it's more about God, right? If we go uh, to the book of John and look at uh, John chapter 3, uh, let's see, John chapter 3 and verse 30, he must increase, but I must decrease. It's all about Christ. It's not about drawing attention to myself. It's about drawing attention to God. And as we witness to people, we're drawing attention to God's redeeming power of change, right? God is in the change business. He wants to change us. He wants to make us new. There has to be a revival. There has to be a revival in this world. You know, I don't know what's going to happen in 2021. I really don't. I don't know uh, what's going to happen with our health, with our finances, with the weather. I don't know with politics. I don't know what's going to happen. But I know that what we can control is our relationship with Jesus and our trust in him. Are we going to draw nearer to him? Are we going to uh, 
uh, increase him in our lives? Is that what we're going to do? I hope that's what we're going to do because the, the, the closer uh, we draw near to him, the safer we are. It's safe to be in the arms of Jesus. It's safe to walk the narrow way. And is it a struggle? Absolutely. It's a struggle. And especially when you first change, but you know, it's like when you're exercising, right? It hurts in the beginning. You know, your muscles hurt in the beginning, but after you do it for a while, um, it doesn't hurt so much, right? Um, and that's how it, it's going to be a struggle in the beginning. And like I talked about in, in my book, when my family and friends, a lot of my friends deserted me, um, that's okay because the friends I lost that were secular were worldly. I gained many more friends in the church. Um, but that's just how it is. You know, Christians cannot be a friend of the world and a friend of God, right? We re reject uh, the cares of this world. We reject the, the desires of this world. We reject the filthiness and the unjustness of this world. And what we want is to be like Jesus. We want to have that righteousness of Jesus. We want that holiness and we want to be better. And if we desire it, God will help us, but we have to do the work. You know, if you want to be successful, look at uh, people in the Bible who were successful. Look at Daniel. He prayed three times a day, right? Uh, look at Joseph, right? He purposed in his heart that he was going to fo follow the religion of his father in a foreign land. And when he got to Egypt, he was the lowest of the low. But you know what? He held those high standards and he refused to worship Egypt's gods. He refused to, uh, to be seduced and to sin by committing adultery, even though it, it meant a great sacrifice to him, right? Being thrown in prison and all. It, it, but he, uh, it didn't matter to him because he only cared about being right with God, not right with the world. And that has to be our desire too. Are you right with God? And if you're not, are you ready to get right with God? Are you ready to make 2021 your best year uh, as a Christian? That whatever areas that you um, have not uh, cleaned up that you're going to work on, uh, we can do it. You just have to commit. I know a lot of people make New Year's resolutions, but you don't need to wait till January 1st to commit your life to Christ or recommit your life to Christ. You can do it today. and. I want you to do it because I want you to be successful and I want you to be in heaven. And I know God wants you to be in heaven as well. And the only way that you're going to get there is to do it God's way. And as we read the Bible and as we study and draw near, you know, look at the people who were successful and see what they did, right? Look at the people who were not successful and see what they did. You know, there's a lesson to be learned in mistakes as well. There's a lesson to be learned when people fail, you know? so. Let's, let's be ever learning, right? And applying what we learn to our lives because it doesn't do us any good to have all this great knowledge and wisdom, yet it, it doesn't affect our life. And I want to share with you one more verse. It's found in the book of Colossians. This is a letter Paul to Colossians, and it's Colossians um, chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. And it says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. That's what our 2021 has to be about. Set your affection on things above. Who's above? Jesus is above. Set your affections on him. The Father is above. The angels are above. Set your affections on those things, man not on earth don't be drawn into the cares of this world the desires the the shiny objects of this world because you know what one day it will all be destroyed but you know what can't be destroyed if you don't let it is your faith and your trust in jesus so if you've fallen back a little bit in 2020 let's move ahead let's make 2021 our best year and you know what who knows maybe jesus returns in 2021 but and we're ready to meet him in the air Right? We're, many, we're ready to go through whatever trials and tribulations that come our way because we have committed our life to Jesus Christ. And we are ready to walk with him no matter what. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. And we ask you to be with us in a special way. As we move forward to a new year, please go with us. Lead and guide us. Help us to become new men and women in Christ. To change and to be uh, how you need us to be. Let us be righteous and holy. Let us seek those things and put aside the filthiness and the unjustness of this world. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you for listening. Until I see you again, uh, have a great week. Goodbye.